So my question is, if a testosterone booster doesn't actually raise your testosterone levels after doing a blood test, then is there any point in actually taking this particular herb or supplement in the first place? Well, in this video, what I'm gonna do is look at the claim that testosterone boosters don't work and we'll dive deep into what they actually might be doing in the human body, which no one else is discussing online. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas, the founder of Boost Your Biology. If you've been enjoying these videos, please like the video and hit that subscribe button down below to stay up to date with the latest and greatest health research. So let's assume this particular scenario. You start taking a particular supplement that's designed to boost testosterone levels naturally. You start taking it for maybe eight to 12 weeks and then you decide to get a blood test. And after you get the blood test results back, you notice that your testosterone score has not changed at all since starting this particular supplement. But what you have noticed is an improvement in energy levels an improvement in libido and overall vitality. You may have even noticed an improvement in mood and confidence. So do we now completely disregard this supplement and say that testosterone boosters don't work? Well, again, it's another reminder that obviously it really does matter in terms of seeing whether or not objectively on a blood test, your testosterone level. But if you're responding well to a particular supplement, but it's having no effect on your blood test parameters, that does not mean test this particular supplement is a waste of money. And so what I really wanna do is have a look at the backdoor pathways to some of these subjective benefits that you may be noticing after using various supplements that are designed to boost testosterone naturally. As a friendly reminder, there are specific supplements and herbal medicines that do have subjective and objective benefits in terms of increasing testosterone. And there's a number of supplements that I've talked about in my Limitless course, such as Tonkara Lee, Sistanch, Pine Pollen. Some of these supplements do have a favorable effect on testosterone levels if we were to do a blood test. But what I really wanna remind you of is the other subjective backdoor pathways where we see some of these benefits. So just remember that some of these herbs and supplements or peptides, they can alter subjective well-being via number one, manipulating neurotransmitters. So a good example of this is the natural testosterone booster, quote unquote, uh, maca powder, which does not appear to increase testosterone at all in humans. But what it does appear to do is raise the concentrations of specific neurotransmitters, which we'll dive deeper into shortly. Number two is they can also manipulate subjective well-being via altering neurosteroid production and think allopregnenolone. So let's say, for example, we use a another common uh, herbal testosterone booster and we don't understand the mechanisms, but one of the ways in which it might be working is through raising the levels of allopregnenolone in the brain, which is a neurosteroid that does convey anti-anxiety effects and also supports healthy mood. Now, another way in which some of these uh, testosterone boosters might be working is by manipulating neurotransmitter receptor sites, sensitivities, and binding affinities. So they might be acting as natural um, dopamine transporter inhibitors. They might be inhibiting MAO A or MAO B enzymes. And so what we need to consider in addition to this is that some of these herbs and supplements can also alter subjective well-being via enhancing blood flow or via the upregulation or downregulation of various enzymes in the body. Hey guys, if you're watching this video right now and want to unlock your full mental and physical potential, then the Limitless course is for you. Unlock my best biohacks for energy, motivation, and testosterone optimization so that you can conquer your goals with ease and crush every day with confidence. Click the link in the description and get it now for only $27 today. All right, now let's get straight back into the video. And again, if you're gonna be subjecting yourself to these particular experiments, there's no way of truly knowing whether or not it's actually raising or decreasing some of these enzymes and pathways in the human body, unless you're actually you know, surrounded by doctors and medical professionals that can do these um, extremely sophisticated testing to assess whether or not they're affecting these enzymes. And so what is the end goal of supplementation? Well, if you ask me, it is to feel, look, and perform better. It's to enhance vitality and subjective life quality and well-being. If science hasn't proven this 
does it really matter? This is when it comes back to N equals one sometimes does matter. And so if a supplement is safe, free of side effects and but does not impact blood test results, but it actually makes the person feel great, even if it's a placebo, is it still worth the money or is it a waste of money? Well, let's get a discussion going on this particular topic. Leave a comment down below. Do you think it's a waste of money if a supplement does not affect your blood test results, but it actually makes you feel subjectively better? Here's an example. For Doja Agrestis, which was popularized by our favorite doctor, Dr. Andrew Huberman. For Doja Agrestis stem extract, restore selected biomolecules of erectile dysfunction in the testicular and penile tissues of paroxetine treated Wistar rats. And so if we don't see an increase in blood testosterone levels following Fedosia extract in humans, let's say you're a, you're a guy, you've started using Fedosia and you've done a blood test 12 weeks later, but your testosterone level hasn't increased, but you've noticed better mood, better erections, better vitality. Does this make Fedosia extract a waste of money? Well, actually we can see here the particular pathways in which it might be working. We can see that for paroxetine lowered mounting frequency, intromission frequency, and we can see that um, they compared it to uh, sildenafil. And so what they noted was that Fedosia extract appeared to restore the nitric oxide CGMP pathway which are basically erectile dysfunction associated key enzymes in the penile and testicular tissues of male rats via antioxidant means. So we're seeing here that Fedosia agrestis does appear to favorably impact blood flow. And so this might explain how Fedosia extract might be working. This next study here outlines how maca powder may be able to improve uh, metabolism and general uh, neurotransmitter production. We can see this study here was titled Antidepressant-like behavioral, anatomical, and biochemical effects of petroleum ethyl ex extract from maca in mice exposed to chronic, unpredictable, mild stress. And so what they noted here was that maca extract also induced a significant reduction in corticosterone levels in mouse serum. In mouse brain tissue after six weeks of treatment, nor adrenaline and dopamine levels were increased by maca extract. Serotonin levels were not significantly altered. These results demonstrated that maca showed antidepressant-like effects and was related to the activation of both noradrenergic and dopaminergic systems. And so another example of this is how tribulus can alter our mood and motivation via decreasing prolactin. So here what they noted was that tribulus treatment dropped the prolactin levels of the males from 17 down to 7 a whopping 60% drop. So it appears that tribulus is also anti-estrogenic, at least in humans. And we can see that tribulus may act as a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, leading to higher levels of dopamine in the brain. And so due to the higher levels of dopamine, the mood is elevated slowly and the stronger and better the feeling for the user is. So we can see that tribulus does appear to manipulate the neurotransmitters in the brain, as I alluded to. So if you learned something new in this video, please like the video and hit subscribe down below. Let's get a discussion going. What are your thoughts on this particular topic? Do you think that most testosterone boosters are indeed a waste of money or have you noticed benefits subjectively? Thanks everyone for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.